you so much. Uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, introduce today uh, Dr. Vladimir Bervik, uh, which I consider myself one of the finest optical science uh, in the world, uh, based on our collaboration, previous collaboration and current collaboration together. Dr. Vladimir Bervik, he is a group leader in the uh, laboratory for attosecond and high field physics, headed by Professor Ferenc Kraus at Ludwig Maximilian University and Max Planck Institute for Quantum Optics in Garching, Germany. Also, he is uh, uh, chief of the uh, coding department in Ultrafast Innovation uh, Company in Germany. So he is uh, in both side academic and industry. And also he is the chief of MAP, uh, of Surface Center Coating Facility at Ludwig Maximilian University in Germany. Uh, Vladimir got his PhD in physics in 2006 in Max Planck Institute for Quantum Optics, right after Ferenc Krauss moved to uh, Max Planck from Jena. Uh, and before that, in 2004, he got his master's degree from Kyiv National uh, Taras Chavinchenko University. He has many awards related to the optical science, and some of them is Outstanding uh, Designer Award in 2010, uh, and three years before that, he also got the same prize, Outstanding Desi Designer Award for the third prize, Non-Polarization uh, Beam Splitter Design, and uh, plus many other uh, awards. He also has many scientific achievements, and he is very known for uh, producing and a broadband dispersive uh, mirrors spans more than 1.5 octave, which allow to generate sub-3 femtosecond pulses. And also, he is uh, uh, he's known for the invention of double-angled dispersive mirror, uh, and also, which is something related to uh, my previous work, if you remember from my uh, last presentation in this colloquium, I showed to you the light field synthesizer, including the generation of the uh, first uh, attosecond laser, laser balls, not XUV, attosecond laser balls, and Vladimir Brevik, who designed all the dispersive mirrors and beam splitter for the synthesizer. So without this technology, we're not able to uh, achieve these short pulses. He has over 130 uh, papers in high-profile journals, including Science and Nature, some of them we are co-author, and also plus the uh, high-profile journals in the field of optics, like Optics Ex Express and op Optics Letters. And today, Vladimir will uh, present for us some of his work about the advanced multi-layer coating for femtosecond and attosecond physics. Please give a hand to Vladimir. Uh, thank you very much for kind introduction, and thank you for uh, inviting me. Here it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, I divided my my talk on on first 10, 15 minutes. I will try to speak on very basic for for the coating, but then we rapidly move to to uh, high high end uh, result. What what we can get with this technology? Uh, a few words about uh, how our group organized and uh, actually um, the group of Professor Kraus. It's 120 scientists. And uh, both of, the, I mean, uh, we located at two institutions because we are too big. It mean it's not enough place for in one institute. One is Max Planck Institute for Quantum Optics and uh, Physics Department of Ludwig Maximilian University. Both organization, it's like 10 minutes away from each other. It mean uh, uh, we do some experiment at Max Planck Institute, some at uh, Ludwig Maximilian University. Um, here it's uh, the photo of uh, our last annual meeting that's uh, all scientists in, uh, uh, in this group. And my, my group is actually uh, uh, about 10 people. It's year to year change. Here are uh, uh, all my colleagues. And actually, the whole group of Professor Kraus basically uh, the research devoted to invention of uh, develop different uh, laser source, make some fundamental research on femto and other seconds or ultra short uh, uh, pulses, high energy uh, physics. And partially my, my group in just delivers all optics what required for all, 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 uh, uh, all lasers. 
now let's move uh, very slowly to a topic of my talk. It's uh, uh, basically it's mirrors or optical elements. And I just uh, use a chance in Boston and uh, I take a picture of very old mirrors, which is like six, uh, 5,000 years old. This is the first mirrors. Uh, uh, which people use in Egypt for to watch it. It's just a metal mirror. Uh, we will move and our technology will become much better. We can now get much higher reflectance, control many properties of the coating. And here's just schematic how it looks uh, usually the coating. We have a substrate. On top of the substrate, we uh, um, substrate from this side, we put the, our coating, and basically the coating, it's called multi-layer coating. It consists many thin, thin layers, uh, and each of these layers has refractive index and uh, absorption coefficient. All of them has a dispersion as well, if you consider different frequency, and another important uh, parameter, that's the thickness. And basically, when we design uh, some optical components, we allow to change all, all these parameters. We can choose any material which we want. We can uh, and basically, we should also uh, find the thicknesses for this coating. Uh, if we know the all thicknesses and all materials, we can use a matrix two on two and calculate what happens to electric field and magnetic field. Uh, going through th or interact with this structure. We can calculate the reflection, we can calculate the transmission beam, uh, for we can calculate for, uh, for different polarization and, um, and so on. Basically, uh, here's a f actually the formulas how we can calculate the all. But basically what, what, what we do to, uh, to, to the structure, we uh, uh, multiply the when each layer we can present as a matrix, two on two, and basically whole structure, it can be uh, presented like result of multiplying all, all matrix for each layers. Um, when we usually, uh, <coughs> when we uh, start to design, usually our problems, it's different. We don't know the structure, we know just reflectance or phase property of the quantum, what we need, and we try to find what the thicknesses and what uh, what the structure we have to produce to get these properties. And actually, uh, quite some time ago, in 1958, uh, the first uh, uh, was, uh, before the coating was just produced, you just make some layers and you see the properties. And at that time, uh, because the computer start develop, the idea come how to optimize our structure. And basically you make a, some merit function in which you put what parameter you try to optimize, the reflection, phase, group delay, and so on. And then you try to find the, the thicknesses of la layers which should be, and later to be able to, to produce this uh, layer structure. Um, our experience, what we, what we do basically in, uh, in our lab, it's uh, we work in with short pulses. And when we work with short pulses, it's additionally to reflect and the transmission of our optics, we have to control the uh, phase of pulses. Uh, why we have to control the phase or why, why it's different too? When we, uh, when we try to generate the short pulses, the short pulses has uh, some certain bandwidth. And the shorter the pulse, the larger the bandwidth. And of course, the uh, different frequency go with different speed in, in di different dispersive medium. That's why, why it's required to, uh, to control very, uh, very, uh, nicely the, very nicely the, um, the dispersion properties. Actually, in 2005, uh, one of the director of our institute that gets the Nobel Prize for, for a frequency comp uh, uh, spectro spectroscopy, what, what is a actually, um, require very nice uh, control. Uh, on next animation, I will show how the basically this uh, kind of optics working. Let's assume that we have a sh short pulse which has become chirp in in medium, and we what this means the chirp pulse that the longer wavelength components in front of the pulse and shorter wavelength components in behind, and when such pulse come to the our multilayer optics, uh, this mirrors basically. Uh, match all frequency in time. Now we can see in large scale how what happens here. 
and longer wavelengths penetrate much deeper in the structure of mirrors, and shorter wavelengths reflect on the top of the layers, and then when it's get out of the mirrors, when it's reflect, our pulse become very, very, uh, very short because all frequencies just match in time. Uh, just to to do the same, what I just show on animation, it just basically, if we assume we have a short pulse, if the short pulse travel in any dispersive medium, and just to get impress what kind of dispersive medium, if the sh short pulse will go, five femtosecond pulse will go through the air, through the air, air has almost no dispersion, just very, very small numbers. In one meter, this pulse will not be any more five femtosecond, it will be already six femtosecond. Uh, such pulse become a chirp. What basically happens there, the longer wavelengths penetrate faster in dispersive medium, if it's normal dispersion, uh, and short, shorter wavelengths component delay in this medium. And that you see how the, this chirp pulse look like, basically uh, the frequency is not match anymore in time. And if you want to again, again, to get the short pulse, because sometimes we have experience, we have a short pulse in, the, in this place, but actually our setup where we w want to have a short pulse, it's far away from this place. Even in such simple problems, we need to compensate this chirp. And basically the chirp mirrors, what they do, they co compensate the uh, group velocity dispersion to make the pulse again, again short. Basically the dispersive mirrors just do opposite, they delay the red comp uh, the long wavelength components and um, uh, introduce no delay for the short wavelength components. Actually, when we go to the multilayer structure, it's, uh, there is a two effect is used in uh, uh, structure itself. One uh, uh, effect is called penetration effect, when different frequency penetrate in different depths in uh, in in layer structure. And actually, historically, this mirrors was called first chirp mirrors, but actually the modern mirrors, they are not really working like a chirp mirrors, because that's the reason why this chirp mirrors, it's not really proper name for, for a modern, uh, uh, modern dis uh, mirrors which we use, because in modern mirrors we use also s another effect, very significant as well. Imagine that you have one mirrors, you have a cavity and you have another mirrors. In this way, the light comes here, and the light will remain in this cavity for some time. In such way, we can delay some certain frequency. If we do multi such cavity inside of our structure, we can delay many, many different frequency. Um, from this slide, what I want to show and bring to the message, actually the old structure which we uh, produce now, it's better to call dispersive medium because actually they use a combination of, of this effect. Depends on the bandwidth, they use, uh, th they use a different, uh, uh, different effect here. Just one more uh, picture how the penetration effect look like, in which way you, you get a delay. We have a substrate, we have our multilayer st stack and longer wavelengths penetrate much deeper in structure and shorter wavelengths reflect on top of the structure. And in such way, we get a delay between uh, different frequencies. But actually, the modern mirrors use, as I told in previous slide, use a combination of both effects. And here is an example of real mirrors. Um, actually, what we see on the figure, uh, here we have a substrate. On the substrates, we deposit our multi-layer structure. Here, just many different different layers. From this side, it's coming our light. And for our convince, I split the different wavelengths in uh, specially so that we can see the difference. Here we have 820 nanometers, and here we have 740 nanometers. We see that these mirrors provide a penetration effect. But when we take a numbers, when we take the thickness of this coating and calculate in femtosecond what kind of delay can be provided, we see that penetration effect provides just 70 femtosecond delay, but actually if you look on, uh, on total delay for these mirrors, it's 170 femtosecond. It means these mirrors, you can even see here where it's the hot spots here, they have a cavity delay. It means uh, we have cavity here, we have cavity here, we have cavity here, we have cavity here, cavity here, and cavity here. It means this cavity provide additional large delay for some certain frequency. Uh, of course, this cavity effect, it can work uh, just for certain very narrow band uh, 
KV, uh, uh, range of frequency. That's reasons why we why we have many cavities in in, uh, in this mirrors. Uh, actually, if you look on the structure for these mirrors, which I just presented to you, you can also see in the structure where this cavity yeah. insert. You see, uh, first here we have a substrate, and here we put our layers. Total number of layers is 89 or 88 layers, and here we have a thickness. Usually, our a layer structure consists of two materials, one with high refractive index material and another with low refractive index material. It's shown with yellow and uh, violet uh, colors. Here we have a physical thicknesses. Uh, and basically, I divided this structure on, we have one first part, it's mirror number one. This part is again mirror number two. And basically, the thicknesses of this, this is a quarter wave for uh, quarter wave layers for 800 nanometers. And basically, we have here the cavities. This cavity is not include one layer, but raise a, a combinational layer because we need a combination because we need uh, a some certain properties for these layers. And we cannot get this as just this properties with one layer. We need to use a combination. But basically, this combination of layers work like you can consider three layers like one layer with slightly different refractive index uh, of materials and so on. It's like work like effective cavity. And yeah, the basically how the, uh, the structure look like. Uh, another very important point, uh, that's how to produce the structure. Because yeah, I, I think we, we have a question, right? Thank you so much. Um, what are the C1, C2, and M? Yes, that's what I told that this whole structure is divided. Uh, I called me, it's mirror, and C, it's cavity. It means uh, this, this particular structure consists of seven cavities and eight mirrors. And when we make a design uh, by changing the thicknesses and so on for this cavity, we uh, change the reflectance for, for these mirrors, and we change uh, the thickness for this cavity. It means the thickness of this cavity it should be very precisely. Otherwise, this cavity will not work with our certain frequency. It means we need to control very precisely each layer thickness here. Uh, you can see that some layers are like about 100 nanometers, some is much thinner. But if one of these layers here will be instead of 100 nanometers as design, will be 101 nanometers, the whole structure will not work anymore. It means we have to provide very great precision. And we have a few coating, coating machines in our facility. The first uh, is called magnetron sputtering machines. Uh, basically, the principle how it's work it's located here we have uh, uh, but before I go to the basic I should call that magnetron sputtering this is not full name actually the machine called middle frequency ion assistant dual magnetron sputtering and this name include I will try to explain each word what this means um, basically when we deposit one material instead of one target we have a two targets and uh, basically, it's shown here. We have a uh, target from the same material. Uh, this is why it's called dual. And basically, we apply positive and negative charge to positive to one, uh, to one target and negative charge to another target. And we change this uh, with middle frequencies, the positive and negative charge to target. In our chamber, due to uh, a plasma source, we have a plasma, and depends what kind of charge our target has negative or positive, the electrons or ion is just uh, uh, flying in direction of target with uh, uh, large speed. In such way, we evaporate or sputter our material in direction of uh, to the substrates. Yes, I mean, I actually, the target for, for this particular machine should be metal or semiconductor because we need a conductive, conductive material. Otherwise, all these things will not work. And basically, our plasma, it's a, uh, plasma consists of uh, oxygen. It means when we produce the layers with this machine, we produce whether pure metal coating, whether we produce oxide coating. For example, with this particular machine, we cannot produce fluoride coating or some uh, uh, other material which not include uh, oxygen or uh, it's not pure, pure, uh, pure machine. Uh, I should say a few words. This machine provides very great precision, but I come back uh, after compare all technique what we have uh, in our machine. The oldest 
uh, technique. Uh, it's so-called electron beam uh, machine. There is a different variation of this machine. It might, might be with ion assistance, without ion assistance, and so on. But basic principle, we have a material. And with electron gun, we send the electron to, to material. And with help of electron, because they are accelerated and uh, come to the, they bring uh, energy to material. And we evaporate, uh, evaporate this. Um, um, we evaporate material in s such ways. That's how the, these machines uh, look in real life. It's like a boxer chamber. We have a chamber. Here's the door to the chamber. And inside of the chamber, we have colored where we call it. And the third technology which is used for high precision optical coating, this is so-called ion beam sparkling. In this particular case, we don't use electron, uh, we don't use electrons, we use pure ions. Usually we use argon or xenon ions. We send to our target and after because the ion has quite some energy, the our material fly in direction to to our substrate. And this way we we can um, control very nicely very nicely uh, the all parameters here it's example how uh, what happens to uh, one example why for example ion beam sputtering is better as electron beam machine this is the how looks the roughness of our coating if you use electron beam machines because the energy of material which fly to direction of the mirrors is very low we have quite rough rough surface uh, some modification of electron beam machines, the people invent the machine with ion assistance. It means they additionally to not only material fly to direction, they eliminate the whole material with ion gun. In such way, they uh, they able to pack material more dense, but it's still the electron beam machine provides a, it's better than pure electron beam machine, but with ion assistance, you can get better. But actually, if you compare the result with ion, Ion beam sputtering machine, it's, yeah, it's just incomparable because the layer from ion beam sputtering machine is much more smoother. Uh, I will actually, that's uh, exactly the, yeah, that's how it looks the ion beam sputtering machine. And actually, I come to the table with, un un with answer on your, uh, your question. Actually, I sum up the all possible te technology and positive and negative side. Actually, uh, many of people in some institutes, they say ion beam sputtering is the best technology. Uh, some other institutes say, no, magnetron sputtering is the best technology. Actually, in my opinion, there is no best technology. There is uh, one machine work much better for, for some application, another machine work much better for another application. For example, electron beam machines, it provides you, you can produce really very large optics. It means when you produce optics for telescopes, it's only the machine which can, can be used. Uh, it has quite relative ri deposition rate. Uh, disadvantage of this machine, of course, it has, the coating has quite large losses. It's not environment stable. It means the, co uh, the properties of coating in chamber, in vacuum, it's different to the properties when you remove the mirrors from the chamber. Uh, accuracy for the layer deposition is also not the greatest. Uh, in this particular, I mean, if you consider the magnetron sputtering, uh, it cannot deposit as large optics as electron beam machine, but it can do very low absorb coating. Uh, unfortunately, there is the losses for scattering. It's slightly higher than, uh, than absorption losses. It has relative uh, relative fast rate, and what is the uh, best about the magnetron sputtering? It has really a great precision. It means if you need the coating where you need to control the layer thickness very precisely, that's a machine which should be used. Uh, I Ion beam sputtering machine, the, the best things what, uh, what ion beam sputtering, because the layers is very smooth, it means our scattering losses is very low. It means this machine can provide very low uh, scattering and absorption losses. That's the reasons why this technology is used for all um, Galileo projects, for all gyroscopes, and all where you need very low total, total losses. Uh, disadvantage of this machine, it's very slow. It means when you try to deposit some thick coating, it takes two, three days to finish the coating. When in comparison, this machine it just do this less than uh, less than in ten hours. Um, 
we spoke about the we spoke about the technology how evaporate of pattern materials but actually to to get the great precision for the layers we need to control the layer thicknesses and there is different ways to control and here just one example how it's possible to control it for example one way we measure the transmission spectrum or reflection spectrum of coating which we produce it's in C2 measurement. It means we have our uh, tune table where we our locate our all samples, and we just measure one of the samples which really produce in the chamber. Uh, and each second, we get the information how the transmission spectrum or reflections look like. And here it's blue curve. And actually, by fitting this curve, we can estimate the thickness of these layers. It means each turn the our tune table do we know the thickness of our layers and we can control very precisely very precisely the our uh, layer structure here just example for example when we start doing a coating that's the result how look the curve after one layer here we have a different wavelength sorry for for very small scale and here we have a transmission from zero to hundred red curve this is a measurement and black curve this is a fitted curve this is what how look the curve after one uh, wa uh, first layer, after fifth layers, fifteenth layers, twenty layers, twenty five layers. It means you can see after twenty five layers, for example, it was mirrors for one micrometer. We have almost uh, nice no transmission in range of one micrometer, and still quite uh, quite uh, many oscillation in uh, in visible range. But you see that uh, uh, basically by fitting the uh, black curve to the red crosses um, of measurement, basically we can calculate and compare what happens to our layer thicknesses. Here, for example, uh, example of one uh, layer structure. Here we have our layers number. Here we have uh, thickness which we have to produce uh, for the layer structure. And with red color and shown theoretical calculated design, what actually our we want to produce. And with blue color, it shown the the layer thickness which we actually produce and here it's shown the relative arrows for this particular for for this particular mirrors actually when we uh, when we go to produce a real structure i won't just give you a, an example uh, for 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 dispersive mirrors which provide minus 100 femtosecond square delay in range from 810 to 1010 nanometers it has a bandwidth of 200 nanometers the layer structure look like this. We have high and low refractive index material here. We have a different frequency. In this particular structure, luckily, we don't have very thin layers. The thinness is just 80 nanometers. The thickness is about 260 nanometers. Uh, when we produce a structure and measure the group delay dispersion, what is uh, the second derivative of phase properties? So, yeah. Uh, when we produce this uh, when we pro uh, when when we pr produce such structure, you see that our measurement curve. We measure a few samples from from the chamber. We see that our curve it's not look like a theoretical curve, which uh, look like a blue curve. Its razor has some some oscillation, and actually the reason for this oscillation there is a two reasons. Our layers which we produce, it has it should have some certain optical thickness. Optical thickness, it's uh, refractive index multiplied with sto uh, physical thickness. It's mean the reason for this oscillation, it might be errors in physical thickness or there some change in, in refractive index. And actually, to improve this, we run many, uh, many times uh, uh, our machines with the single layers to get the properties of our layers with very nice precision. And here it shows the curve, how it looks for a single layers. By fitting this curve and fitting the, uh, choosing different uh, dispersion for refractive index, we can nicely identify the refractive index curve. And by using a new refractive index curve, we can improve much, much better our, our deposition, uh, that our measured curve look much closer to the theoretical curve. Here we have a transmission measurement that you see the uh, theoretical and measured curve it just almost coincide. And this is the uh, group delay dispersion. Um, 
here it's just examples. This particular mirror was produced on 200 millimeters uh, substrate. That's how this piece looks like. It has a weight of 10 kilograms. And actually, it's mounted to, to the tune table, which uh, rotating in, 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 uh, in chamber. And here it's again, you can see how the looks uh, original result with which we were start. And when we optimize our refractive index, we can get much closer to, to uh, to the target. It's just that you get a feeling that we really need to be very, very close to, uh, to uh, um, uh, and very precise with our uh, deposition technique. Here, it's for example, this uh, mirrors like look because when we produce a mirrors and we want to use this mirrors for high energy application, uh, the layers which we produce, it should not include any defects. It means all this production is done in clean room of very high class clean room and of course this mirror should not be touched by any means and all the substrate should be prepared in very special way and so on. Uh, here again just to get a feeling that here it's 200 millimeters uh, piece and here a three inch piece which is also quite big one but yeah uh, it just compare how, uh, how big the I uh, know a few words uh, regarding the all uh, chirp mirrors or dispersive mirrors story. Uh, this uh, optics, the first publication was done in 1994. And of course, when you just start in 1994, the coating, uh, uh, coating um, precision for, for layer control was not as good as uh, now. It means it was done much simpler, uh, much simpler coating and actually each time when you develop, you do a small step to develop the new coating, I just try to put some coating on, on time scale. Each the step was allowed to go with shorter and shorter pulses. For example, here you was happy to have a 10 femtosecond pulses. Uh, when you produce much broader uh, mirrors with uh, very nice control, you can go to three femtoseconds. It's just really uh, a huge, and a uh, huge improvement and each time you you provide new and new coating you was able to also see how the lasers just make a quantum jump uh, in uh, in development and each time we uh, we was able to uh, to uh, to generate better and better uh, better results uh, now I will go to uh, to some experience what uh, basically the the Mohammed uh, do in his lab. I will historically start from. Um, I will show you how we start to solve these problems, and at the end I will show how the Mohammed will <laughs> will uh, will do this in his uh, in his lab. Actually, it's very simple uh, simple setup. Each time the people want shorter and shorter pulses because uh, it has high. Uh, High peak intensity and 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 um, one of the way to generate a broad uh, to generate a short pulse you need to generate a broad spectrum and one of the easiest way to do it is to use a holoco fiber where you send a relative short pulse of 10 to 20 femtosecond uh, and due to the nonlinear effect you 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 get a broad spectrum as shown on on this figure. And then you need to compress this, uh, compress this uh, stretch pulse. The one of the way to do it is to use a broadband chirp mirrors. And for example, here is one example of this mirror. Because the uh, mirrors is very broad, this mirrors include unavoidable oscillation. Let's see just red curve. For example, this is red curve. It GDD curve for one mirror. This is unavoidable oscillation. And one of the tricks how the people decide to solve this problem it was to design a complementary pair. It means instead of design one mirrors, we design a two mirrors simultaneously, and keeping in mind that we want to cancel oscillation of first mirrors. It means the red cur curve shows the uh, uh, GDD of one mirrors, with blue curve showing the GDD of another mirrors, and we see that uh, if we combine these two mirrors, then GDD is become very, very much smoother. What actually it's uh, needed. Here we show the uh, how the mirrors look uh, uh, look after production. Here is the GD curve, uh, red and blue. It's for sing uh, for single mirrors, and with dark uh, violet, it's uh, a residual curve. Here it's for GDD curve for both mirrors. By applying these mirrors, 
we was able to achieve the throw output after 10 bounces, what was necessary to compress about 70-80%, pulse duration of uh, about 4 femtoseconds. Here is how we look the after correlation function for, the, for, for this, uh, for, for this uh, pulse. But basically, when we use this technology, uh, we're not able, one thing, we're not able to control CEP because the mirror, I mean, you can control the CEP by changing CEP of, la uh, of laser, but the mirrors basically don't introduce any, any change to CEP. But much nicer way to do it, um, it's uh, to make some way synthesis, it's to use the same spectrum, use basically the same setup, but change uh, instead of mirrors using slightly different approach. Because the spectrum is very broad, we cannot a able with mirrors control very nicely each certain frequency. But if we would do something and we be able to control each certain frequency in, in laser system, each just for each, each frequency, we will able to uh, obtain arbitrary electric field shape. It's mean here is just example. If I control the delay between different frequency, I will able to basically provide almost any electric field shape. And actually, uh, if you look for some particular case, let's consider the case where we want to get the shortest pulse what is possible. In this particular case, uh, we cannot speak any more about the pulse duration because actually uh, it can be that our electric field will be sub-cycle. It means in this case we cannot speak about pulse duration anymore because uh, it's not uh, a correct definition for uh, for it. And here actually basically how we was able to do this, it's uh, we started this project in 2006, 2007 and uh, basically what we did, we have uh, our broad spectrum which come to our device. With one beam splitter we split the one third of our sp uh, our spectrum to first channel with second beam splitter we uh, split the second parts of this uh, spectrum and go to the third channel. Why we have a three channel? Because with this three channel we can independently control delay for all this frequency. And when we combine this light again with the same beam splitters, we can ex actually provide arbitrary uh, arbitrary electric field. It's much more powerful tools as a, a dispersive mirrors. And actually here just a few examples how the uh, optics in this system look like. We have one beam splitter which uh, reflects the whole, uh, I'm speaking about this blue channel, how it reflect all, all, uh, all, uh, all light for blue channel, ref transmit the rest of the light from uh, 350 to 500, it reflects the light from 500 to 1000 nanometer, it's transmit. Uh, another beam splitter reflect from 500 to 700 and transmits the rest of the spectrum. Uh, here, how look the mirrors for uh, for this channel because this mirrors slightly compensate the dispersion for each channel. And um, actually, uh, it's very nice picture because if you will look how the light look uh, when we send the light, because this light include all frequency, it means this light look like like a white light because uh, it's like consider all, all frequency what we see with eye. When we um, build a synthesizer and we combine the all uh, light, actually it's one of the difficulties in here because we need to combine all, all channels, specially and in time domain. It's very important things. It means they need, the all optics should be very flat and very nice <laughs> produced because you will not able to specially collimate the uh, all stuff and another was in, in, in time domain. And actually, if you do everything properly, the light which exits the uh, synthesizer looks again white. It's really like uh, very uh, simple, but very nice. Here it's actually a, re a result which uh, Mohammed together with uh, Lefterius Gulimakis was obtained in, uh, uh, during the Mohammed PhD in, uh, uh, in, uh, in Darking. Here how look the pulses in each channel. We have relative short pulses, 8 femtosecond, 5, uh, 5.5, 5.5 in uh, each channel. And actually by combining uh, the short pulses and providing different delays, we able to uh, generate the, uh, the light with, uh, with, 
with a different or arbitrary electric field. And here you can see how auto-streaking uh, auto pictures look like. This is a uh, uh, recorded electric field of our, uh, of our short, short pulses. Uh, I want to stop on a particular case. For example, this is a shortest pulse which we can generate here. Uh, if we provide some certain delay between different channels, we can able to generate the shortest pulse. And actually, for the shortest pulse, we cannot speak about pulse envelope, what is defined the pulse uh, duration. Actually, uh, it's better to speak about, uh, 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 yeah, that we just have one uh, oscillation in our electric, fi electric field. And actually, if we just look how bright this one, it will be actually uh, 500 uh, attosecond, not, not two femtosecond, but we, each we will remain still in our pulse duration um, definition, then the pulse duration will be about two, two femtoseconds. Actually, when we uh, speak, I spoke before about multilayer structure, usually we consider all layers like a linear, in linear regime. But when we go to the femtosecond regime, the pulse intensity is so high that our layer, which usually like a glass, it, it has almost no, no non-linearity. They become behave like non-linear materials. And here I will show how the mirrors will behave like non-linear elements. The first, uh, in one experiment, accidentally, uh, we observe very interesting things. Basically, if we do very simple, we have a laser beam and sending the laser beam to our mirrors and just see how the intensity change on these mirrors. Uh, what we observe, one mirrors on this curve, we have intensity, and here we have reflection of our mirrors. Uh, uh, I was called uh, call by colleagues, and colleague told me, your mirrors has a reflection of 10%. I was like, cannot be. I mean, I measure the mirrors before provide you mirrors, and it was 100%. It cannot be that mirrors reflect 10%. I mean, if you, if you say 99, we can discuss this, but 10% uh, <laughs> uh, is not, uh, not possible. And actually, uh, what we recognize, when I remeasure these mirrors with my spectrophotometers, I still get 100%, but he go to his setup and he get 10%. And actually, we try to look for, for the problems. And actually, the problem is intensity of our light. Uh, with violet color, it shows uh, how the refle uh, reflectivity of the mirrors change with, uh, with intensity. And you see, when we in increase the intensity, the reflection is dropped. And it go to 10%. And very funny thing that these mirrors remain and standing for long, it can stand for an hour with reflection of 10% and not damaged. It means if we reduce intensity, what is shown actually on the graph here, it's basically the same. We just increase intensity and decrease intensity. It means the mirrors is just d depends on intensity change the uh, reflectance without any, uh, any visible damage. No, in, in this particular case, we don't have any uh, gisterius curves. It's really just return in the same way how to, uh, what is, uh, happens here. And actually, uh, we try different mirrors with different uh, dispersion, with different material. And we find out that the mirrors with higher uh, GDD has much stronger this effect as the mirrors with smaller GDD. Uh, material which is, has higher nonlinearity uh, like tantalium has a band gap uh, uh, smaller as the uh, uh, mirrors based on, 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 on gafnium uh, because some mirrors is almost doesn't show any of, of this effect and just get damaged. Um, it means we start to look for, for what's the reason for such behavior. And actually, the explanation for this is uh, two photon absorption because the band gap of our material it was not broad enough. In this particular case, we use a laser with 400 nanometers, and this 400 uh, nanometer it was exactly enough to uh, to get the two photon absorption. If we measure the temperature of our samples, 
Here we have a time, and here we have a temperature. We see that immediately after the turn the lasers, our temperature on the surface of mirrors grow to 150 degrees and remain, actually, if we remain the intensity, it just remain in, in this case. If we take another mirrors which has much less of this effect, it just has uh, almost no change in, in, uh, uh, in temperature. And here it's explanation for this. Here you can see how the electric field look uh, for different structures. Here single layers, uh, here we have a substrate, we have incidence medium, and from this side it's coming our, uh, our light. It means how look the uh, electric field inside of multilayer structure for quarter wave stack and how it's look for our dispersive mirror. For some certain frequency, because of the cavity, we have a very high peak for, for uh, uh, electric field in our multilayer structure. And that's explain, explain why, uh, why we uh, observe this two photon absorption. Actually, we, uh, we make also uh, theoretical, we just use a two photon models and we was able to fit all our measurement very nicely with two photon models and he just show the example with uh, dots shown the uh, measured curve for reflection versus uh, peak intensity and with solid line that shown the theoretical calculation uh, including that our uh, material has two photon absorption and by this we can also define the our non uh, non parameters for materials uh, it's very interesting effect but actually at the end experiment we would like to to have a mirrors which don't have this effect or have much smaller effect and this can be solved by optimizing the electric field inside of the multilayer structure this is original structure which provide minus 150 femtoseconds uh, square delay and it's shown on this graph with yellow yellow dots and this structure which we optimize for uh, for low uh, two photon absorption in structure it means the structure start include much more low refractive index material because low refractive index material has has much larger band gap and for low refractive index we don't have two photon absorption we need three photon absorption and of course it's much a less probable process. It means our, all our we decrease significantly amount of uh, high refractive index materials, and of course it's not completely remove this effect, but it postpone. We can work with these mirrors for much higher intensity, and you can see the uh, the mirrors with tantalium, which provide minus uh, 100 femtosecond uh, delay, we shown with violet colors. And if you compare the curve for yellow color, it, you see that it's postponed for much higher intensity. And with these mirrors, we can work uh, at least with 10 times higher intensity as uh, in original mirrors. what you mean on, on thermal properties. A actu actually, uh, if you mes measure the temperature for this structure, it's this temperature doesn't grow anymore as it was for this structure. Yeah, 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 of course it's, uh, yeah, here the g again, we for all mirrors which we calculate, we have now a nice theory. It means we can predict, uh, predict, uh, uh, we can predict uh, how, uh, how good uh, our structure is. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, very, uh, now I was speaking about nonlinear absorption, and uh, I find much more interesting effect it's care effect, because care effect it's I mean when you work with absorption it's very difficult because your materials start absorb energy and then the temperature grow it's always yeah much interesting effect it's so uh, care effect. And to observe the care effect, we produce a structure like a filter, like shown here. If you zoom, zoom this range, the filter look like this. And the structure made in special ways that it provides uh, at, uh, at low intensity higher reflectance, at high intensity lower reflectance. It means that for different intensity, we can get two different uh, reflection values. And everything is done with help of uh, with help of uh, care effect. Here the theoretical curve, here the produced curve. It's slightly shifted, but actually it's not a big problem because we design this filter in the way by changing the angle of incidence. We can 
exactly fit the wavelengths of our laser. It's mean this pr actually we for this experiment we use the wavelength 1,030 nanometers. It should be somewhere in, in uh, around this value. It means we very nice uh, uh, fit the structure. And basically we make very simple experiment. We have our uh, laser light. We focus on our sample. And with power meter, we measure reflected beam, and we measure the uh, transmitted beam, and we also the measure the ch uh, temperature with uh, infrared camera. And actually, what we observe when we adjust this filter by tuning the angle, that's uh, 50 to 50 percent. That 50 percent of light transmit and 50 percent of light reflect. Actually, what's written here, we observe by increasing the intensity, our uh, reflection. Uh, start grow, the transmission fall down. It's mean our ratio 50-50 just change to another by changing the uh, by changing the uh, this ratio. But actually, what we observe as well is that the temperature of the sample at high intensity just grow. Uh, and here, this graph shows that the, our losses is almost uh, slightly increased, but almost not increased. What's evidence for that? It's not two photon absorption, but raise a uh, but raise a um, care effect. The same we observe for another ratio when the reflectance is 80%, uh, transmission is 20%. Actually, to avoid the uh, temperature effect and to avoid uh, thermal effect, we do a falling experiment. We introduce a chopper and we make a chopper with 10%. That means we send not the same average power, we send just 10% of our previous uh, power. And what we observe in, in, in this particular case, uh, the green dot shows uh, the same curve as in previous case, combined without chopper. And when we introduce the chopper, we, uh, we, we measure the yellow curve. And actually, uh, this yellow curve, this is purely care effect, pro provided due the change in reflectance due to uh, care effect. And you see that also in, uh, when we introduce the chopper, we can split it the result, which provides it due to the thermal shift because the laser has a high power and we still have uh, changes in reflectance due to the change in temperature of the samples. Uh, and here you can see for, for quite some intensity, we can see 5% changes due to the car effect, what is really uh, very fantastic values. Uh, we observe this also for, uh, yeah, we, uh, this car curve shown for the chopper off and this curve show for, for the chopper on. In this case, we can see uh, that thermal effect changes is also due to 5%, but in case when we chopper on, thermal effect is almost nothing, and nonlinear effect it still remains there. It means the curve effect is still still working for the structure. It's the same behavior we observe for another ratio when we change the angle of incidence. And now a few words about the, uh, a few words about the application for this effect. Consider you send to the sample the same. Uh, intensity and you change you start change the intensity i mean the intensity start fluctuate to any reasons and to quite large values and actually what uh, what you see here as soon as the sample get to the nonlinear regime the sample start uh, start walk uh, like a limiter what i mean the li limiter whatever whatever intensity you send to here the sample will not get out more than some some certain level. It means that the transmission and reflection change in the way that you start send some energy, and that some energy, whatever more you send, the sample it still transmit just some certain value of milliwatt getting out. And you can observe this for any ratio when you adjust the different ratio. Um, uh, by tilting the angle, you can get 50 to 50 ratio, like reflection 50%, transmission 50%. You, c you observe even more this effect for when you get reflection of 90%. It means whatever energy you send at some moment, it just gives you some certain level. It's, uh, for some application, it might be quite interesting. Regarding the nonlinearity, actually, uh, there is a group of uh, Rudolf Wolgan in, uh, and um, from New Mexico Inst uh, University and from, uh, together with people from Laser Centrum Hanover in, in uh, Hanover in Germany. They produce a special design for, for multi-layer coating and they generate the third harmonics. And actually, they make a design in the way that the mirrors itself 
generate the third harmonics with uh, um, with very high efficiency. I think now the efficiency about like uh, a few percent that the mirrors itself generate uh, generate the third harmonics. It gives you some. Mm, for some application, it might be very, very interesting because the mirrors is very thin, and it's uh, don't have the light when it goes through the multilayer structure. It doesn't have any nonlinearity, and for this particular case, it can be used at much high intensity because if you use some crystal, you limit it to uh, to intensity. Um, one very important uh, topic I told that when we produce a structure, it's very sensitive to the deposition errors, and here it's one example of, of this. We have a theoretical curve for GDD mirrors shown with blue color, and uh, uh, and uh, if we include the deposition errors uh, with um, plus minus one nanometers uh, errors, uh, the curve can lie in gray cor corridor, and actually it's shown by rod dots, uh, red points here. Uh, we apply a very special special design. We call it robust design algorithm. And usually, you have a merit function, and people usually consider only one design when they do this. But actually, to make it more robust design, we consider the cloud of design. It means we consider, like in the same time, 50 or 100 designs. And by doing this, applying this algorithm, we able to stabilize our uh, our layer structure much uh, significantly. Um, it's one example. It's anti-reflection coating. It's very good, uh, good example, because uh, here I have a precision, our precision what we have, um, and when we apply our robust algorithm, it's quite different to what we what we have in case of standard algorithm. Usually, uh, the design co uh, design provide you more more and more layers and go to infinity with number of layers. It provide each step more complicated and more complicated structure. But as soon as you introduce the uh, precision for your uh, for your uh, uh, deposition process, uh, this algorithm starts stopping. It's limiting itself. It means it's not provided. Let's say you can provide very complicated anti-reflection coating with nice performance. So it has 38 layers and uh, very small merit function. But actually. It's very difficult to produce such reflection, uh, uh, anti-reflection coating. If our uh, if our structure will become, uh, we include our arrows, arrow bars in our structure, uh, our layers structure become much simpler. The, our software just tell us we cannot produce very complicated coating. It has no sense to design 38 layers coating if our precision is three nanometers. It means software already give you a design with eight layers. The properties of this design is worse, but you um, can be sure that you're able to produce this layer structure. And when we apply this to the chirp mirrors, a uh, conventional design, and this is robust designs. When we, the layer structure, it looks completely different, like a two completely different. They do approximately the same job, but the, it look very different. And here is comparison of final result. This is how, how look the measurement of original mirrors, and this is how looks the uh, uh, robust design. It just the crosses is lie much closer to the theoretical curve. Uh, because I slowly running of out of the time, uh, somehow I become slower as I expected. I have to um, uh, skip it a few a few slides. Uh, I just want to show one more example how we work in infrared range and produce uh, um, infrared mirrors. And actually, uh, basically, what uh, what I uh, want to stop that's one of uh, things what we uh, also uh, doing uh, when we move to infrared range. Uh, the problems because there is in each wavelength region there is their problems. And for example, when you try to generate something in infrared range, especially around three micrometers, there is a water absorption. And what happens to the our multilayer structure? Then you produce a mirror; it looks nice. But as soon as it stay in a uh, humid environment like air here, uh, it absorbs the water from the air, and uh, you have a huge absorption. And actually, we by using a special design, we was able to produce mirrors with a very small absorption, water absorption, in this region. And here is shown there with red 
colors a reflection curve for the mirrors, and here's a GD, a GD measure it in this wavelength region. It's mean uh, it's very nice for for uh, for the mirrors which uh, which um, yeah. Uh, basically, idea for this project, we want to build the oscillator which uh, working in the range from two to three uh, to three micrometers. I'm coming to the uh, yeah to uh, almost last slide of my. Actually, in my talk, I show you that with uh, uh, dispersive optic, we able to control the phase properties of our layers in the way that we can generate very short pulses, and yeah. Uh, I show you how we can generate uh, two femtosecond with help of uh, wave synthesizers. Actually, we have a lot of freedom uh, by designing the mirrors. We can design the mirrors with narrow, very narrow bandwidth, with minus 10,000 femtoseconds square. Uh, uh, all damage threshold for our mirrors, it's also an issue. And at the moment, it's somewhere in a range of 0. Uh, half joule per square centimeters. Our mirrors, which we uh, uh, produce, actually it covers a range from one nanometer to twelve uh, to twelve micrometer range. And actually, the last curve, which I want to show you, uh, w always when we produce a design, uh, it's like a trade-off. When we have very short pulses, we uh, we have a very large bandwidth, and we can provide just a certain uh, group delay, like a minus fifty. Uh, femtosecond square. If we reduce our bandwidth, we go for the longer pulses, and we speak about 100 femtosecond pulses or whatever, we can produce much larger dispersion in this. It means sometimes it's always limitation, and when we actually, one part of my job, when the laser people come to me, I have to translate their language on my language. Uh, of course, the people, when they come and ask for the optics, they say, I want the broadest optics because I won't cover all my needs in the next 10 years. But actually, usually it's not possible. And you have to be as close uh, you to what you really need. As bad I can, uh, we can optimize the optics. And that's actually it's shown on this curve. It means if you, uh, in reality, need just mirrors with 100 nanometer bandwidth, but you ask for 400 nanometers, you get much worse performance for the mirrors, and it's at the end it has no, uh, you will not benefit from it. Uh, I would like to uh, thank to all people because the result it was, yeah, just not get from myself, but for many years for with uh, many different in collaboration with many different people, um, and I would like thank you for your attention.